Hello again, and welcome to the Daily Bread Bible Study. This is for day 133, for Tuesday, May 12th, 2020, from 2 Chronicles 21 through 24. So we are exploring some more of the kings, especially the kings of Judah, though we will hear reference to some of the other kings of Israel as well. Importantly, we get back into the section where we talk about kings with the same names. So, starting in 2 Chronicles 21, King Jehoshaphat dies of Judah, and his son succeeds him. Now, this king is named Jehoram, and it shares a name in common with the king of Israel, the king after Isaiah um, of Israel will be named Jehoram or Joram of Israel. So he shares a common name and also a common dysfunction. He leads people in the ways of false worship, aka idolatry. So both Jehorams, the king of Israel and the king of Judah, are subverting the Lord God at this time. And we will see at the end of today how subverting the Lord goes wrong. For Judah's sake, the Lord is not going to forsake his covenant with David. God's going to remain faithful to his covenant and stay faithful to God's people, even in the midst of other dysfunctioning and dysfunction happening, happening accordingly. It says, Edom and Libna revolt in 2 Chronicles 21.10. Because they had forsaken the Lord, the God of their ancestors. So on account of this false worship, the king of Judah gets even a letter or gets a letter from the prophet Elijah. So Elijah, there as he is in his older years, uh, he gets a letter from Elijah. So this likely puts the story, you know, in comparison to the beginning of Second Kings, likely chapter one. Uh, we see the elderly prophet Elijah pronounces judgment on Jehoram, king of Judah, in kind of a fourfold type of unveiling. It says, because you have walked in the ways of the kings of Israel in idolatry, because you have murdered your own family, then the Lord will send a plague upon your people, and the Lord will send a severe and painful bowel disease upon you. Even more than this, the Lord also sends the Philistines and the Arabs to plunder Jerusalem, including the king's sons and the wealth of his house. Only his son Jehoahaz remains. Additionally, King Jehoram was not well loved, and upon a painful death from his disease, the people made no fire in his honor, and uh, 2 Chronicles 21.20 20 says, he departed with no one's regret. Just sad words to hear. In 2 Chronicles 20, 22, the people of Jerusalem make Ahaziah king, since none of his brothers remain. Now Ahaziah receives leadership advice from his mother, Ataliah, a granddaughter of Omri and a daughter of King Ahab of Israel. Remember, King Ahab is not very well loved. He has run-ins with the prophet Elijah a fair number of time, and he also is known to be connected with Jezebel or Jezebel and the worship of Baal or false prophets, false gods. He uh, follows in the wicked ways of the kings of Israel and even works with King Joram of Israel in battle against King Haziel of Aram. So, King Joram of Israel, also a name for just another tr um, version of King Jehoram. So Joram or Jehoram, same name. They go against King Haziel of Aram, and the Arameans injure King Joram of Israel. And Ahaziah, king of Judah, travels to Jezreel to see the injured king. Now, this account is a repeat from 2 Kings 8. The anointing of Jehu is omitted, though, um, here in Chronicles. And Jehu cleanses the line of Ahab all the same. So, in 2 Chronicles, the connection with the house of Ahab 
is mentioned for you know as the same reason for his death, the death of um, Ahaziah. Now with Ahaziah dead, you know due to the cleansing due from Jehoram, his mother Ataliah takes over control and kills the rest of the royal family. The chapter ends with the saving of Joash by his aunt. So only Joash is left in the lineage of David. So will the Davidic line end here with Joash, or will it keep going? Well, in 2 Chronicles 23, we see that the priests of the Lord, the ones who fear God and you know, respect God's command to give David's line, um, continue David's line, they take that into their hands. And so they hide this son for seven years. So in the seventh year, the priest Jehoiada instructs off-duty soldiers to keep watch over the remaining heir of the throne. Jehoiada takes young Joash and anoints him king of Judah. The self-proclaimed queen Adaliah comes to see the noise and then calls out, Treason! Treason! Now for the deaths of her grandchildren, Adaliah and her followers are killed outside the house of the Lord. Thus the last major supporter of Baal, the last connection to King Ahab of Israel and Queen Jezebel, Jezebel. And you know, they are the last is dead. And so at the age of 7, jo Joash also um, there in kings called Jehoash Jehoash is uh, made king, and the people destroy everything else that remained of Baal in the city. So we're back on good terms. Worship of God is going to go well here for a while. Second Chronicles 24, it says in verse 2 of chapter 24, Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of the priest of Jehoiada. So King Joash of Judah takes up a collection for the repairs of the temples following Jehoiada's instruction. The priests were put in charge of the money, but for 23 years the repairs are not made. So uh, I'm sensing dishonesty from the priest who quote-unquote collected the money. So King Joash works with the priest Jehoiada to give the money directly to the people who work on the repairs so that the money is not misused. Uh, it says that it goes well, and I commend the trustworthy process they installed to prevent abuse of money. This encourages people to give to the cause when you have trustworthy systems in place. So that's very important, is to make sure the money goes where it's promised to go, and that the money serves God and not humans' pockets. In 2 Chronicles 24, 13, it says, So those who were engaged in the work labored, and repairing went forward at their hands, and they restored the house of God to its proper condition and strengthened it. So I last time in my commentary on 2 Kings, I remember not being sure if it, doubting that these repairs ever happened at all, but apparently they did happen. So that's a correction from that time. When the priest Jehoiada and the king Joash work together, things prosper and flourish. When they are separated, things decline. Because upon Jehoiada's death, Joash, the king, listens to the voice of the followers of false worship. Thus, idolatry ensues again, and the prophets are rejected of the Lord. I should say the prophets of the Lord are rejected. Even more, the prophetic words of Zechariah, son of Jehoiada, are met with hardness. Jo Joash's hardened heart to the Lord and what the Lord has to say, and also the hardened stones used to kill Zechariah. For Joash has Zechariah stoned to death, and in his dying words, Zechariah asked God to avenge him. Vengeance does come in the form of King Haziel of Aram, the nation brings war against God's people, and King Joash is injured, and also in his weakened state. A conspiracy kills him from within his own group. 
for the murder of Zechariah. The author also makes it clear that Ammonites and Moabites are part of this conspiracy, that descendants of Lot, you know, relatives but yet enemies of the people of God, bring a man of Judah to his end. Thus, the symbolic uh, ways of idolatry, you know, worshiping Ammonite and Moabite gods specifically, leads to the downfall of Judah. So that's continuing trends that we see a long time. Even Moses going back and warning, if you worship the, you know, if you abandon God and worship the gods of the land, if you don't utterly remove the gods of the land, then you will be doomed to suffer their fate, being dispossessed of the land. So we see that here, that continued theme of dispossessing when people do not obey God's word. And we will see how that uh, keeps on going through the end of Chronicles here um, on the Daily Bread Bible Study these next few days. So thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful day and God's blessings.